Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to see how do you configure a PRI back-to-back -back connection. First and foremost, let's understand what exactly it means. So let's say if you want to simulate a ISDN PRI calling on your lab, you will not obviously purchase the ISDN PRI connectivity from your service provider where you have to pay huge amount of charges to the service provider just to test your PRI connectivity uh, testing, right? Just to simulate the calls. Uh, this uh, PRI connectivity can be uh, purchased from the vendors like, uh, for example, if you're in India, right? Uh, you can purchase it from Jio or uh, maybe um, maybe a Reliance or uh, Airtel or uh, Tata, right? So these uh, guys uh, provides you E1 T1 lines at your home or at uh, your office premises, and then you connect it on your router, and then you can simul you can use a real E1 T1 uh, connectivity in order to route the actual E1 T1 calls, PRA calls or telephone uh, ISD calls, right? So obviously you don't want to invest huge amount of money in just to you know simulate this in your lab environment. You would need something at a cheaper rate. Right. So in that case, uh, you can uh, you might be thinking like you can use a virtual router in that case, for example, GNS3 or even G. Right. So uh, let me tell you, like you cannot use a virtual router or even G to simulate ISDN PRI uh, back to back calling or ISDN calling. So the virtual router does not support uh, PRI ISDN connectivity. So now the next uh, thing what you can do is uh, the next last option that you are left with is you need two physical routers on your network uh, the model can be like 2800 3800 series etc right so in these two routers what you need to do is uh, one router you have to have a e1 t1 port in it and in another router you have to have one e1 t1 port in it now you on both the routers you have one e1 t1 port in each now the next thing what you need, need to do is you need to uh, make sure like you do, do the cable uh, crimping of this cable as per this can uh, as per the image here so uh, it is one cable and this cable has two ends right obviously any of the network cable will have two ends and this cable is basically a RG45 uh, connector and uh, this normal uh, CAT cable, right? CAT5 or CAT6 you can use. So uh, this is, uh, and we are using RG45 connector here. And in this one, one end will be orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. This is going to be your one end of the cable. And the other end of the cable would be blue blue white green white orange white orange green brown white brown this has to be another end if you don't know how to crimp this cable you can go to any of the nearest uh, vendor uh, who deals in the uh, LAN van or maybe computer uh, accessories right they will uh, crimp this cable or they will put it exactly as per your specification uh, de defined on this image so as I said, like this is going to be a CAT5 cable, for example, and this connector is going to be your e, uh, RJ45 connector. And this connect, this cable, once it is uh, done properly as per the image, so this end will be connected to one of the E1 T1 port on the first router, and this end will be connected on another E1 T1 port on the second router. Now. Once you're done with the basic uh, uh, hardware uh, connectivity, right? Um, then what you have to do is uh, you have to do some configuration in the router and make this working. So let me show you like I have written an article long back. Let me show you that. So this is the article uh, which you can refer simulate uh, PRI E1 uh, T1 calls. And this is how exactly the specification look like. This is exactly what uh, we have looked into the image now once your cable is patched now connect it on both the router this is what i mentioned and now you have to have one a service provider end and another uh, router as a customer end so obviously uh, one router would be your service provider be uh, end because uh, your service provider will technically be you know sending you the 
event even aligns on your network right so one side would be event even lines uh, one one side would be service provider side so i would always consider uh, the other side or the far end uh, router uh, as a you know service provider side and the customer side i would consider as my near uh, nearby router which means like my call manager will be sending the calls to uh, the first router which is going to be my uh, sib gateway or which is going to be my mgcp or st23 gateway so the first leg uh, the calls will be received on this router and this uh, router customer end router will be sending the calls to the service provider uh, end okay so in my case what i'm going to do is i'm going to consider the service provider end as cme and customer end as a normal gateway so which uh, will be so basically the call flow would be call manager any calls made from the call manager the call manager sends the call to the gateway and this gateway sends call out of your event even lines to your service provider on cme and the service provider uh, further sends the call wherever it is supposed to right so let's do with the basic configuration on the router now what i do is i'll log into my cme router first so this is going to be my cme don't worry about this messages uh, my system is running in a low resources and is having some fan issues as well so you can ignore them so if i do it show isdn status you will see that there is nothing configured as an isdn lines right now my phys the physical cables are connected on the router now let's start with the basic configuration of course you have to first in the foremost you have to configure the network clock participate uh, is what you have to configure so let's see uh, what is our weak card here show inventory if i do, do show inventory our card is on sub slot 0 and sub slot 1 uh, slot 0 and sub slot 1 so let's start with the configuration so what i'll do is uh, i'll come here on the configuration mode and enter the command network clock participate wic zero and enter okay sorry uh, i should have done it as wic one okay because uh, the sub slot is one here now uh, what i'm to do is now uh, as soon as i uh, have done the configuration here what i'm going to do is i have to enter some command as like eyes in switch type i'm going to configure isdn switch type primary net5 this is the command i'm going to enter for the switch type now what i'll do is i'll go to the controller i'll uh, go to go and configure the controller controller e1 and my slot is going to be 0 slash 0 slash 0 sorry 0 slash 1 slash 0 yeah and then i'll enter the command clock source internal then pri time group time slots one hyphen let's say i don't want all the 30 channels to be up and running i just want five channels to be up and running right i'll only make it as pri time slots one five and then no shut now i'll come here and i'll go to the in serial interface zero slash zero one slash zero column 15 and then encapsulation hdlc isdn switch type primary net 5 i this is the important command which you have to run so by default uh, any of the isdn interface right it will be a user interface but if you want to simulate as a service provider it has to be a network so this is the configuration this is the command which you need to enter in order to make this as a service provider and isdn protocol emulate network so this is something you have to do on the service provider end and then i'm going to configure the command isdn uh, incoming voice voice okay so this is the configuration i have done show is in status let's see so if you see here it says like uh, the layer one is in shutdown let's bring up the layer one and see go to the configuration mode 
I'll go to the interface. I'll do a no shut. Now let's do the ISDN status again. So it is still in shutdown. So let's make sure like the controller is also up and running. So let's see the controller. Okay, looks like the controller is also up. So now what we have to do is we have to configure the other end, right? So let's go to the gateway end. We'll go to the gateway here and, and apply the similar configuration here. Before that, let's know where is our weak card. Show inventory and our weak card is in basically weak to here. Okay. configure mode and then I'll type uh, the command as let me refer to this page here <coughs> okay. network clock participate Vic. now if you type a question mark I'll end sorry I have to enter as V2. Yeah. Now what I do here is I'll go and configure the controller. E1 0 slash slash. Okay. And then PRI times plots 1 is to 5. So basically I'm giving the okay. I have to enable the command ISDN switch type, which I forgot. ISDN. ISDN switch type primary net 5 and then what I have to do is I have to come here and then control on the controller side I have to give PRI time slots okay and then if you see the channels are coming up no shut I'll just put a no shut here and then I'll go to the interface ISDN serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 call 15 and then encapsulation HDLC and then ISDN switch type primary net 5 okay okay interface must be down before configuring this parameter so I've shut down the interface and then configured the parameter and now I'll put as ISDN incoming voice voice and no shut so here if you notice I'm not applying the command here ISGN protocol emulate network because by default this uh, protocol will be as a user. So one side will be acting as a user and another side will be acting as a network. So my gateway end this is my gateway end which is going to act as a user and this is my service provider end which is going to act as a uh, network. Let's see the configuration now. Show ISDN status. So if you notice here, my ISDN status has come up. Okay. So if you notice here on both the ends, now the ISDN interface is up. By looking at the configuration, the layer one is up and layer two is multiple frame established. So this clearly shows right when you are uh, when if you are having the configuration or if your cable connector is working fine and you have to, you have plugged in the right configuration um, or you have plugged in the right cable type on the event T1 lines, then uh, your event T1 lines will come up uh, provided that you have put in the right configuration and make sure like uh, this the service provider end you have the right configuration in it now let's say if i remove this command the will the interface come up it will not let's do that okay i'll go here in the interface i'll put a shut and then i will remove this command as a network and then no shut let's see if the interface has come up or not you see here it says awaiting establishment the layer one is up but the layer two is stuck at awaiting establishment and ti assign you see it is not coming up now as, as 
as soon as i change the isdn protocol to network now <coughs> the layer 2 should come up you see as soon as i change the isdn protocol to network the layer 2 has come up so this clearly shows like one sign has to be a network and another side by default it will be a user so you don't have to define this side as a user because by default that comes as a user so but on this side you have to enter the command isgn protocol emulate network so that uh, the uh, layer 2 can come up right so let me summarize this what configuration we did apply so first and foremost we came here and then we um, you know enter the command network clock participate with one on the service provider end isdn switch type primary net5 and then if you go down scroll down here and this is the configuration that we apply interface serial and the relevant configuration like isdn switch type isdn pr protocol emulate network which is very important isdn incoming voice voice and then um, no shut and then you also configure the controller part so the controller part was here so controller e1 t1 clock source and pri time pri group time slots 1 hyphen 5 16 and now on the on the nearby side of the router or the gateway side this is the configuration we applied <coughs> So network clock participate week two, and then ISDN switch type primary net five, and then controller E one zero two zero PRI group time slots one five sixteen, and if you scroll down, we applied the configuration is. Um, it is not shown clearly here, but because of the error that we have received, I'll do it shown on again. and this configuration interface serial 0, uh, 0 to 15 and then encapsulation isgen switch type primary net 5 isgen incoming voice voice that's it that's all you need to do and your layer 2 and layer 1 should come up provided that you have the right cabling done as per the image shown here all right i hope uh, this video is informative for you thank you for watching